Can we all stand to sing hymn number 48, Author of Life Divine, hymn number 48. sit down. A warm welcome to everybody. And whether we have a pandemic or whether we don't have a pandemic, whether we're few or whether we're many, the Lord is still here. And this morning, when I was praying to God, I kept on thinking, this is the day the Lord has made. And whatever day we live, this is the day the Lord has made. So it's lovely to be here, and we're all very, very welcome to worship God this morning. So notices, I was just informed by Morag as I came in, that regrettably the carol service has been cancelled this evening, and that's right across the benefice. So it's hard times for us, but it's something I think should be online. I think more, more like I said, something will be provided. And also, regrettably, refreshments will not be served after this service this morning for the same sort of reasons. Because I think there are vulnerable people, and it's a question of protecting us all for the common good, isn't it? So there will be better times, but... God is still God, and we're still here this morning, so praise God. Now we're going to light the Advent candles. Yes? Right. Okay. Yes, that was the problem, wasn't it? Because I can... Unfortunately, because you're turning that way, I know. If you turn around more that way. Yes. Then you won't be. You're tending to speak away. I am. Yes. Wait side. a minute. I'll tell you what I'll do. Because yeah. I want everybody to hear. Um, Try it there. Is that better? Right. Wait a minute. I just put it here. Yeah, that's it. It's more. I'm glad you said something because we want to. We want everybody to hear. Is that better? Because I want well, to. When you're yeah. That yes. That so. That yeah. Because I don't want to sort of ignore you either. <laughs> so. Um, yeah. Right. So. Basically, what I said was the the carol service is cancelled this evening, and refreshments aren't going to be served after the service, and it's regrettable, but God is still with us. So, I now said we're going to light the Advent calendar, not Advent candles, not calendar, Advent candles. And um, there aren't any children here this week, so would anybody like to light it? Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll just put this... So the three are lit, and now it's the fourth week, which is the pink one. Thank you so much.
I leave it to the last right now. It's the Mary one, isn't it? I think it's yes. It's the Mary one. I remember that. Lord Jesus, light of the world, blessed is Gabriel who brought good news. Blessed is Mary, your mother and ours. Bless your church, preparing for Christmas, and bless us, your children, who long for your coming. Amen. So this Advent candle is for the Virgin Mary and it's for joy. It's very difficult to get. Are there any other notices that I need to read out before we start? No. Okay. Yes. Did you all hear that, or shall I relay it again? We're not sure about the Christmas services yet, um, whether it'll be one benefice service in various churches or what, or one of the church. Um, that's all in the air at the moment, so watch this space. The decision will be taken on Tuesday morning, I think. The decision will be taken on Tuesday morning. Thank you. The carol singing outside Budgeons is still going on because, of course, it's in the open air. Outside. So outside. To come along and join us in singing carols outside Budgeons at 12.30 tomorrow. 12.30 tomorrow outside Budgeons. It's all in the open air, so that should be nice and safe. Thank you. Now let us still our hearts to come before the Lord. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Faithful one, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. Heavenly Father, as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O oh God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Let us give thanks to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing. Before the world was made, God chose us in Christ that we might be holy and blameless before him. Let us praise God for the glory of his grace, for the free gift he gave us in his dear Son. To Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, give praise and dominion, honour and might forever and ever. Amen. The grace of God has dawned upon the world with healing for all. Let us now come to him in sorrow for our sins, seeking healing and salvation. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. 
we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the prayer of the day. I don't know what the collect is. Not, is it? Wonderful. Thank you, Morag. The collect. Eternal God, as Mary waited for the birth of your son, so we wait for his coming in glory. Bring us through the pang birth pangs of this present age to see with her our great salvation. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song we will praise God. And we are now going to stand for our second hymn. And our second hymn is number 467. 467. So stand as you are able, thank you. Tell out my soul. Thank you.
seated. A reading from Micah. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little cloud clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. If the Assyrians come into our land and tread upon our soil, we will raise, them up, uh, we will raise up against them seven shepherds and eight installed as rulers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thank you, Morag. The Benedictus, which is the Song of Zechariah, what we're going to do is we're going to read this antiphonally rather than sing it today. And the words are wonderful for Advent, so... We just really absorb these words. So, blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins, in tender compassion of our God. The dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet in the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And now we have our next hymn, which is hymn number 566. Ye servants of the Lord, each for his coming wait. So please stand as you're able for hymn number 566.
we remain standing for the gospel reading? Because when we did the readings, we just did the Old Testament. So thank you, Keith. So it's Luke chapter 1, 39 to 45. Um, And the title is Mary Visits Elizabeth. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favoured that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. Thank the Lord for that uh, reading. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I just want to say two things before I start the the sermon, that is the, the organist. Thank you very much for that wonderful playing, the talent to be encouraged. So thank you. It's really good. And the other thing is Keith, my husband, ha- uh, can't uh, take a more active part in the service because I don't know if you know, but he had his eye damaged at birth. It was a forceps delivery that went wrong. And of course, it was in the 1950s where the medical care wasn't perhaps as advanced as it was today. And as he's got older, it's given him a lot of trouble. So. Um, he sends his apologies but um, it's getting a tiny bit better but he, it sort of goes in phases so that's why so we're going to now look at those two wonderful readings so let us pray our gracious heavenly father we thank you for bringing us together today we thank you for the gift of your word and as we think of these readings Open our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit. And I pray that the words I speak be those you want spoken. And the words we hear may be those that you want heard. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Well, Christmas is not too far away. And um, in young children speak... It's um, six sleeps till Christmas, but I don't think there are any children. But maybe we're children at heart, but six more sleeps till Christmas. And then the presents can finally be opened. And I remember when our children were young, um, they often migrated to the biggest present first. Not that they had an awful lot of presents, but they were attracted by the biggest, most colourful present. They couldn't wait until they opened it because surely if the package was that big, wow, the gift inside it must be equally big and wonderful. The bigger the better. But life teaches us that the size of something does not always properly reflect its value. And good things can sometimes come in very small packages. And this morning we will be considering the theme of good things coming in small packages. The book of Micah is one of the books of the minor prophets in the Old Testament. And it contains prophecy that was written about 700 years before the birth of Jesus. He prophesied when the leadership in the southern kingdom of Judah was a complete roller coaster between ride between good and bad kings. It wasn't a settled time. 
Israel and Judah were constantly under enemy attack. The great cities of these countries, which were supposed to be places of holiness, like Jerusalem and faithfulness, had leaders abusing their power. It was a time of uncertainty, injustice and conflict. Does that sound much different to today? Things have always really been the same. Little is known about Micah's family and about his personal life. And unusually, there's no mention of his father's name, which is quite unusual for biblical genealogy. But it just says at the beginning of the book of Micah, he came from a small village called Moresheth in the foothills of Judea outside Jerusalem. Well, this would have been an agricultural area of the country. Unfortunately, also, it would be very near the Philistine border. So the people would have been in constant fear of enemy attacks. It wasn't a peaceful place at that time at all. Most scholars think that Micah was probably a farmer. He might even been a, a, have been a, a victim of oppression himself. And he lived outside the grand central place of Jerusalem. But he, and he had a strong concern for the lowly, the less fortunate of society the lame, the outcasts, and the afflicted. And Micah directed much of his prophecy towards the powerful leaders at the time. He had small beginnings. He came from a small village and is a minor prophet. Yet, we have in today's reading one of the clearest prophecies recording the place of Jesus' birth many, many, many years before the prophecy was fulfilled. Jesus was not born in Jerusalem or some other great city or a grand palace for that matter. It's not God's way. In verse 2 of our Old Testament reading, we read, But you, Bethlehem of Phratha, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me, one who will be ruler of Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Bethlehem is a small town, approximately five miles from Jerusalem. There was more than one place called Bethlehem at that time, in Micah's time, so he qualifies it by calling it Bethlehem Ephrathah. And the names are significant here because Bethlehem in Hebrew means house of bread and Ephratha means fruitfulness. Jesus described himself as the bread of life and he is the only one who can enable us to be fruitful. The very bread of life, our saviour, was born in a place called the house of bread. But Bethlehem of Frotha was small compared with the other clans of Judah. A seeming small and insignificant package. But God chooses something small and does something there that changes the course of history and eternity. Bethlehem is scarcely worth counting amongst the clans of Judah Yet God chooses to bring this magnificent Messiah out of this town. And the Messiah is the lineage of David. And David came from Bethlehem. In December 9, 1865, the Reverend Philip Brooks travelled to the land of Israel. As he stood and overlooked the town of Bethlehem on Christmas Eve, Brooks was so moved by what he saw that he wrote the words of the Christmas carol that we all know so well, which is called A Little, a little Town of Bethlehem. Writing home to his congregation about the experience, he said, and this is a paraphrase, Last Sunday morning we attended service. In the afternoon we took our horses and rode to Bethlehem. 
When we came to Bethlehem, we saw a range of hills surrounded by its terraced gardens. Before dark, we rode out of town to the field where they say the shepherds saw the star. It is a fenced piece of ground with a cave in it, in which, strangely enough, they put the shepherds. We rode through the fields where shepherds must have been in the time of Jesus. As we passed, the shepherds were still keeping watch over their flocks. The scene described in the carol is of a tranquil and peaceful place with silent stars in the sky. Idyllic, isn't it? But Bethlehem throughout history had much bloodshed, much conflict, much war. If we look at the first verse of chapter 5, the context is definitely of conflict and domination by foreign powers. But out of Bethlehem, God was to raise up the ruler from the outwardly insignificant place of Bethlehem. These words of prophecy give us so much hope. The baby who would eventually be born into Bethlehem is the saviour of the world. This tiny helpless baby from the little town of Bethlehem will soon become the king of the Jews, but also the king of the whole world and our saviour. He comes as the one with t who totally understands whatever situation we're in. And perhaps life doesn't always go as we would have planned it to go. But we know that Jesus always walks with us through whatever we go through. And I think in this time of the pandemic with so much uncertainty, we get very much that sense, don't we, that Jesus is walking with us in this time. Micah describes the one who comes who will be our peace. It doesn't say he brings peace, he is peace. He's the prince of peace. And the Hebrew word here is shalom, and it means a true inner peace, a, a peace, a whole peace of body, mind and spirit. That God's peace will be with us through thick and thin. Out of this small place comes the one who gives us life in its abundance. The ruler will stand and be shepherd of his flock. Another prophecy. Jesus is the good shepherd who protects his flock. He guards his flock, protects his flock, keeps his flock. In the Holy Land, the shepherd would walk ahead of the flock and the sheep would follow. Again, these would be great words of comfort in Micah's time because of the failure of the national leaders not to lead their flock. The ruler came out of such a small place who was born as a tiny baby, but he's our good shepherd. Good things come in small packages and the whole story of Jesus' birth is one of humble beginnings. And we see that in our New Testament reading from Luke's Gospel. And now we're going to consider two humble women who would be shamed by society, yet God chose them to bring about such a vast transformation of the world. Elizabeth was soon to be mother of John the Baptist and Mary, soon to be mother of the Messiah. Both women, they weren't wealthy, they weren't born into a palace or great high standing. Elizabeth was the wife of a priest, but she would have had to have borne the stigma of not being able to have children. And in those days, it was so important, especially for a priest's wife to bear children. She was probably around about at least 60s when this passage takes place. She would be an elderly, infertile wife, and she would have endured years and years of being treated as a failure. Mary, a humble peasant girl, not yet married, only betrothed. And she was probably just a teenager maybe only about 14 years old when these events take place.
But for Mary, what would be arguably the most important job in history is bringing about the birth of our Saviour. She was the perfect unlikely choice, which makes her story all the more remarkable. But then God works like that, doesn't he, through seemingly unremarkable things and unremarkable lives to bring about great things. She did not have any great social standing. She did not have any wealth. She was just an ordinary young girl. Elizabeth was a bit older than she would have liked to have been to have a child. And I'm sure Mary was a bit younger than she would have wanted to have a child. But they both have sons. They're both in different stages of pregnancy. Yet we know that these pregnancies are of monumental significance for the human race. Both Elizabeth and Mary were visited by the angel Gabriel and they gave very, very special, he gave very, very special messages to both of them. As soon as Mary is told about Elizabeth's pregnancy, she goes to visit her relative. Mary and Elizabeth were carrying vulnerable babies, but good things come in small packages, tiny little babies. And the little baby who will be John the Baptist, prompted by the Holy Spirit, leaps for joy in Elizabeth's womb. The tiny baby's reaction to Mary's voice fulfills Gabriel's prophecy, recorded in verse 15 of this first chapter of Luke. It says in John, of John that he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. John points to the coming one. Through the Holy Spirit, Elizabeth says to Mary, Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord will f would fulfill his promises to her. Mary is blessed. And despite all her expectations, her social status has been reversed. She'll be honoured rather than shamed for bearing this child. And the pregnancy that might have brought Mary shame brings glory and honour to her. God removed Elizabeth's disgrace and made her the mother of a miracle baby in her old age. And I said at the beginning that so often people believe bigger is better, but the size of something does not always indicate its value. What about us? These Advent readings can help us reflect on the wonderful message of the good news ourselves. Our Lord Jesus Christ was born as a tiny baby. The creator of the universe chose to stoop down and become a tiny embryo. I'm always amazed at that when you think about it. A little tiny embryo and yet saviour of the world to a, to a poor young virgin. The birth of this tiny seven or eight pound little bungle altered history. And maybe this morning we feel inadequate. Maybe we're feeling too old to be used by God, too young to be used by God, or not good enough to be used by God. But we are all valuable in God's eyes. We are the apple of his eye. We don't need to feel like we're big packages in ourselves because God equips us, God walks with us. And I'm sure that we've witnessed very many blessings through this pandemic of the three churches and the benefit service was a great blessing to all of us, I'm sure. God is still with us. The Bible is one long record of God doing unexpected things through ordinary, unlikely, seemingly insignificant people. And in this season of Advent, we are reminded that God has good plans for us too. Amen.
thanksgiving. The love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. We dwell in him and he in us. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of his marvellous works. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And now we sing on another hymn, which is 328, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace, and stand as you are able to sing. Thank you. 328. remain standing for the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins and the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen.
and please sit. And Jill is now going to bring us the intercessions. Thank you, Jill. Loving God, when I walk the dog through the woods, I marvel at the colours of the fallen leaves and the stark silhouettes of the winter trees, every tree different. You are a wonderful creator, God, and I praise your name. Amen. Loving God, when I walk through the streets of Wivenhoe at night, I love seeing the coloured lights sparkling on the houses and I think of the light you sent into this dark world and I praise your name. Loving God, when I walk into your house of worship this morning, I can feel your presence and I give thanks for all our leaders, for Andrew, Pauline and Tim who help us to focus on you. Loving God, when I walk into my lounge at home and see the world's problems on the television, I feel overwhelmed with sadness at the wickedness of humans. I pray for forgiveness for all our failings and I pray for strength to do better. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, when I walk into a hospital for my booster jab, I thank you for the skill of the researchers and doctors who have made this possible. I pray for those who are suffering because of COVID, both directly and indirectly, as operations have been postponed, leaving many in pain. And I pray particularly for Lynn, for Jenny, for Brenda, for Margaret, for Claire, for Jerry, for Roy, for Raymond, for Emma, for Pam, for Valerie and Lawrence, for Evelyn, for Ian, for David and Elizabeth, for Sylvia and Jeff, for Paul, for Janie and Beryl. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And I pray for those living in residential care and those who look after them, Ellen, Yvonne, Muriel, Pat, Vera, Steve, Ray, Marjorie and Maureen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And I pray for those who've died recently, for Josephine Ferris and her family, and for those whose anniversary of death falls at this time, and those who mourn their loss, for Roy Watkins, for Victor Adams, Jane Newman, Edwin Kelly, Joe Anderson, Kathleen Parker, Peggy Abrams, Michael Rowe, and Albert Colley. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And loving God, when I walk into my dining room and wrap up presents for my family, I think of the rapt child in the manger at Bethlehem, and I thank you with all my heart for the gift of Jesus, our Saviour. Amen. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Jill. And now we gather our prayers and praises into one. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And we will now sing our closing hymn, which is hymn number 529. Wake, awake with tidings thrilling, the watchmen all the air are filling. Hymn number 529. Please stand as you're able.
May the boldness of your spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your spirit lead us. May the gifts of your spirit equip us to serve and worship you now and always. Amen. And we say the words of the grace to each other. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated.